Hey guys, I was asked by a subscriber if I would do a video on my bushcraft kit and what I carry out into the woods in that kit. While I don't have one specific bushcraft kit per se, um, I actually travel with a series of kits. And what I'm going to do here today, we've been out here the majority of the day, I've broken down camp, I'm all ready to pack up. I thought I would show you how I pack and what I carry in my bushcraft pack for um, a day hike or an overnighter. What we're using here is one of my absolute favorite packs. This is the Teton Explorer 4000. I've been using it for quite some time. I love the design. I love the way it holds gear and all the options that it offers. And let me show you how I pack it up here, guys. Right in the front, there's a couple rows of daisy chains here. And on these daisy chains, I keep a carabiner kit, a little one. Um, I have some cotton ball and Vaseline in this canister. I have a tick key to remove ticks when I'm with my golden retriever ember. I have some mini tweezers for the same purpose. I have a whistle and then I have a leather pouch which has uh, fat wood in it. It has an Oppenel number no. 8 which is actually a great fire starting tool. Um, some bank line, things like that. Baco Laplander. And this sheath was made by Tom Chitwood who's a genius of a man. He made this for me. And the way he designed it, I have a strap which hooks right into this daisy chain here. There's also a mesh pocket here on the front. So I have some paper towels, I have some coffee, looks like I have a piece of fat wood in here. Um, I have some maps of the forest and a little piece of paracord in there. When I'm packing up my gear guys, I like to take care of the outside of the pack first so you're not struggling with what's in the pack. Um, when you're trying to pack the outside. I found if you pack the outside first, the stuff inside goes in much easier. Let's start on this side. This one pocket right here, my Mora Classic Number 2. This comes with me every time out. Two permanent tent stakes that I made, wooden tent stakes, and I keep those right in there as well. I have a sharpening kit that I keep in the other pocket that I'm going to show you, but my Lansky puck doesn't fit in there but it does fit into this pocket right here. And I also keep this piece of paracord right here, this bundle of paracord. The reason for this is I always hang my pack when I get to a, a place that I wanna set up. And this is a pretty big bundle, and the reason for that is I never know the size of tree that I'm gonna be wrapping around to hang my pack. So this'll accommodate many different size trees. These pockets have a pass-through system. So behind these pockets, it goes all the way down through, okay? My council tool boys axe. And there's also a little buckle up here that I read they were to hold trekking poles, but they also hold the axe right into place. And I pass through the back all the way down into the mesh pocket on the bottom. My cold steel shovel. Love this thing and use it all the time for a lot. That passes down through right next to the council tool boys axe. The bottom pocket is for my sharpening kit. I carry a couple Altoids tins, mainly for charring uh, punk wood or char cloth. Little ferro rod, striker, and piece of fat wood on there in case I ever need it. So now we move to the inside of the pack. My first aid kit. I have a little Condor dump pouch that I keep tinder in. Next, my canteen kit. I've shown this a few times, a very versatile kit that I carry each and every time out. My ground cloth, this is the Walmart 5x7 tarp. Bushcraft Outfitters 10x10 tarp goes next. I love this thing, guys. Usually this time of year, I always have my Council Tool Boys Axe on me. When it gets warmer out, I don't always have that one, but I do have some form of axe. So this is the Council Tool Camp Axe, little hatchet here. Inside this bucket pouch in the front, or in the back, I'm sorry, there is a little sleeve, almost like a little pocket in there. This thing slides right down the back into that little sleeve on the back. My cordage. This is my cordage kit, guys. 
all of my cordage goes into this green stuff sack. So I have my braided paracord ridge line, I have some nylon webbing, and I have just different hanks of paracord and primarily bank line. I prefer bank line. I have a couple pairs of gloves. Then I'm gonna cinch that up, the inside hood. And then cinch that up. This pocket on the inside of the flap, I keep a couple hats. I have so many hats, I wear hats all the time, guys. And I just like to have them on me, so I keep them right in there. And I can always get to them pretty quick by opening up this flap. I have a 55 gallon drum liner. And if you guys are ever questioning the strength of these or the durability, I've probably used this same one for a couple of years. It's got holes in it, but it still does the job just fine. I love 55 gallon drum liners, guys. Grabber space blanket. When I put down the Walmart tarp as a ground cloth, this works excellent to put on top of that um, to sit on, you know, to do work on. I've also used this as a moisture barrier when I'm sleeping on the ground. I've used the inside of it. I've had it in my hammock with the mylar side facing up so I get the reflection. I can't say enough good things about this. And it's only about $15 maybe. So it's very cheap, but you're getting a lot for that $15. And it's a little heavier duty than your regular space blankets. When I'm doing overnighters, I can put a wool blanket up here. Or I usually put my, um, I have a yoga mat that I bring out and I'll put that right up here. On one of the straps, I have this Coleman tool. It's a compass, cheap compass, a whistle. And the main reason I have it, it has a thermometer on there. On the grab handle, I have a couple of uh, carabiners. I keep tied on here a bandana, just a regular cotton bandana and my shemag. So I have them on me, but they're always out of the way because they're tied onto the one strap. So when I'm packing a little bit lighter, guys, like for a day hike today, I don't use the sternum strap and I don't use the hip belt. I feel like um, I'm only a couple miles in and we're not that heavy with gear, so I just use the shoulder straps, which are very comfortable. If I had more gear, if it was a longer hike and needed that uh, even weight distribution, I would definitely use them. But it's not needed today. I hope I was able to help out. It was great to see everybody, and we will talk to you again down the road, guys. Thanks. Bye-bye.